These days, city living feels much more difficult than it used to be. It seems everyone has a town planning issue or gripe. What's yours? With millions of dollars being thrown at road widening and the construction of new railway lines, do you still find that it's harder to get from A to B? Are you shocked by the amount of good houses on your street that are being demolished and replaced with buildings that are lower in standard and out of place? Or all the new suburbs that are being built on land that you once remembered as bush or farmland? If you are one of the lucky ones that are still in the market to buy a new home, are your choices becoming more and more limited? Are you concerned about poor design and safety issues in the new housing that is available? Do you look at the sprawl and wonder if it will ever stop? Do you ask yourself, why do we keep growing like this? With Australia's population growing annually by over 400,000 people, we are adding the equivalent of a new Canberra each year. This rate of population growth is propping up a stagnant economy, even though, on a per capita basis, we are individually no better off. Like an addiction, the more reliant we become on population growth, the harder it is to break from it. If we leave the economists in charge, our neighbourhoods will never be dense enough, our cities will never stop sprawling, and we will never catch up with the infrastructure backlog. Despite the size of our island nation, we live around the edges because it's only there that we find the soil and water to sustain us. Government plans to move people to country towns are poorly thought out and create their own problems. If Victoria's main regional towns were to absorb just six years of Melbourne's growth, then Bendigo, Ballarat and Geelong would each double in size. Look at the service and infrastructure problems that that would create. It's neither possible nor desirable. Yet our current population trajectory demands doubling in size again, and then again, and again. There is a growing belief that never-ending population growth is a necessary means of offsetting an ageing population. Yet a majority of our retirees are healthy and live independently. Fueled by their efforts, the volunteer sector is a significant yet unacknowledged partner in our economy. We also have chronic underemployment in Australia. All developed nations have an ageing population. It's a sign of good health care and high levels of education. In fact, for any population to stabilise, it is essential that it adjusts to a gradually ageing population as part of the process. If we weren't so fixated on economic growth, we could work on real solutions. Nations need to work cooperatively to solve growing crises such as climate change, biodiversity loss and destruction of nature. Australia must work with our global partners by sharing our knowledge and technology in order to create innovative and resilient low-carbon communities. Part of this approach should include sharing knowledge about family planning and providing universal access to contraception, healthcare and education. Lifting people out of poverty across the world creates political stability and reduces the incentive for large numbers of people to emigrate. In combination with this global approach, Australia must develop an economy that doesn't require endless growth, whether that be in population or per capita consumption. We need to move away from an economic model that requires pouring an endless amount of carbon-intensive concrete into an endless number of new buildings. Models such as the Genuine Progress Indicator as an alternative to GDP already exist. Our politicians and decision makers need to remove their blindfolds. By taking a global approach to population stability and by creating societies that are not addicted to property development, we can help forge an approach to population that doesn't need to shut the door to migrants, while at the same time wisely conserving the resources we already have and caring for our ancient continent. The system we have created cannot go on indefinitely. Morally, we must not sit back and expect future generations to pick up the pieces. The climate is changing now. We must urgently proceed to new ways of thinking. The clock is ticking. The future is in our hands.